first. And according to Carl, it's two paths. So we're doing where we're going. We're going to go up the left side instead of the right side. Left side of this wall, we've left, just gone over. Left side of this wall. And then where the greenness goes up the side of it, that's that's where we're going up. Ah, there. I can see the I can see the path you there. Can just make the path out. Yeah. And then that should bring us on top, just behind. I think it's called Bell Bell Bib Rib. Rib Bell, I think that bit. Right. Um so yeah, this is the hardest bit. Brutal. And because there's no water up there, or there isn't normally, I mean there might be some puddles, but we're carrying up three and a half litres each. So you can imagine my pack weighs 16 kilos. Yeah. Too steep and too heavy. Let's get it done. We're just having a bit of a debate which way to go. And we think we're going up this side here focuses on on there what do you think it's called great door great door yeah. see there's a couple of paths that zigzag up that way I'm not sure there's a bit of a path there as well but this seems to go round yeah they all will they all go to the same place but because we're carrying the weight we want to make it as easy as possible. Getting a bit of a sweat on. You know, when we do these walks, we don't just come all this way to the Lake District just to go up one fell. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but it just seems a waste. So that's how we decided to start doing the Wainwrights, more by accident than anything else. And it does get you to go to different places. I don't really want to film too much of the scenery down here because it'll just be good up at the top, won't it? Well, that's West Water, wherever you pronounce it. And you've obviously got the Irish Sea in the distance. No. Yeah, when I pointed out coming up, we we're going to go to the left of the rock. It's nice it's to the right. Kind of come up the middle. It's the way to come. All right, I'm going to have to, going to, have to put this away. I think this is one of the hardest scrambles I've done. My packs on these packs are really too heavy for this. Yeah, let's be careful. Really difficult, guys. It is with all this weight on getting in the way. Quite tough that, very tough. Yeah, right, I'm putting this away. This next bit. That was uh, <coughs> as much of a scramble I've, uh, as I ever want it to be. It was definitely our limit, I think. Big packs on. Yeah, yeah that was that definitely. Was
Yep, that's you, Barrow, in the bag. Took us about three hours to get here from the car park, but we did about a mile and a half along the road, and then up, up to you, Barrow, which was a lot more than we expected it was going to be, especially with the packs on. That was right up to my uh, maximum comfort limit, really. I don't like to do anything more difficult than that, definitely. Well, we've come down from you, Barrow, down the other side, and it's dropped right down into the valley now, on, along this footpath. You can hear me on this footpath, the wind's terrible. And then we're gonna go up all the way up here to Red Pike, that's it. And we have noticed there is water coming down here, but it did rain a lot last week. Can you see water down there? Yeah, but it is a big down and a big back up again. And there's the path. Top of Red Pike at last. That's been hard. Look at the views, look how steep it is. Only that's doing it justice. Scarfell Pike, there, uh, right in the centre. And look at this corner here. Great gable. With the scree of death coming down. So what time are we on? Three o'clock. Twenty-five past two. So I can zoom into uh, Sea Scale, which used to be called Sellafield. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can pick up this skyline in the distance. That's the Isle of Man. Yeah. Cool. When we was on Red Pike and we're looking down from the summit, the Cairn, if, uh, in the Clag now, when I showed you the vertical drop down almost, that's looking up to it from down here. Well, no, that's doing it justice. <laughs> that is a sheer drop, pretty much. Made it to steeple. We have ditched our bags over there, which uh, I never like doing. But yeah, with the insight, an amazing place. That behind us, Ennerdale Water. Yeah, you come alongside Ennerdale doing the coast to coast. Robin Hood's chair, where the outcrop is, on focus on the, on the lake. And then you come up all the way up here, all the way along the valley to Black Sail Hut, and then over the fells on to uh, Honest to Slate Mine. Yeah. Nice massive drop off yet again. Carl said he's going to run up there now and take my photograph from there over here. Send it to Trail Magazine now and get a free map we don't want. <laughs> right. Crack on. So, this little pile of stones on a wall is Little Scout Fell. 
but Wainwright calls it just Scout Fell, yeah? yeah. Which you just walk past that, you wouldn't know. Unless you were doing the Yeah, anyway, big push now up to Pillar. But as always, you've got to go down and down again and then back up. Oh. Right to you. a bit of a rocky ascent, a bit of a drop off, in fact more than a drop off, if you can see in the distance, zoom in, the right in the middle of the picture now, where we park the cars, That's not the summit, by the way. That's just an out, an outcrop. Another summit. I think it's had. Oh, sun's in the uh, sun's in the way. Spin round. It's had over seven miles. So we've got some company up here. A couple of lads over there looking for a, a spot. So I think it's about six o'clock. See it, let's see if I can zoom in. Where's my finger? Well, just in, in the centre of the picture, if I can keep it still, Black Sail Hut. So that will be with a town in the middle there, that is Haystacks, and where they've scattered Wainwright's ashes. It's really windy. Carl's busy bagging the best spot again. It'd be tens you don't like, but it does. the best spot have you see so, see what i mean just all the time where, where are you putting your door oh, I... well, i'm gonna go here then well no i want to go here there yeah right in front of you <laughs> i'm not looking at the back of your set uh, right, I'm gonna go here, then. no i'm going here piss off over there oh, oh i have to erase that bad one. no no you're not you're not i am Whoa. See what I got put up with? <laughs> yeah, that's not quite level. That's level. Well, I'll just I'll just hang fire till like you know you finished. <laughs> well, I won't come in here because you were there and then you want to be here. Yeah, Okay, the tent's up. I'm trying to film inside the tent because it's a bit windy. A quick look at what I've got, just as I take it out of the bag, to be honest. Right. GSI cup, that's my cup, and mug, whatever. Quite a nifty little mug. That can go there. My little stove. I've got my MSR Deluxe, which they've gone up quite a lot. Little 650 titanium pot. That's all that. That can live there. Oh, 
that's my quilt. We'll come to that in a bit. And I've got in here. That's the inflation sack for me mat, which I bring just in case my pump fails. But I put everything, everything I need for night time goes in there. And that's also a dry bag. A buckle. Only a little bit of booze. Tiny bit, not much. We deserve it. I've got a down jacket and a dry bag. Just a cheap carry more one and a hoodie in that dry bag. So I'm gonna get uh, get my mat out actually. It's an X ped. One. I've got the which is Thermarest pillow. Well, a Thermarest pillow case, because I'll put my down jacket in that tonight, and I've a down pillow, which is really, really comfy. I have got clean clothes to sleep in. So I've got some merino wool leggings, a clean top, which I'll walk down in that tomorrow, because we're only doing one night. And there's some clean socks as well. That all helps to keep your, your down quilt clean. Some waterproof socks in here, and all in case my boots got wet, I could put my boots on to have a, a wonder about him without getting my feet wet. So we've got the x pad Which version is this? This is the wide, the medium, it's the mummy style. Uh, and it's the ultra 5R medium wide mummy. Can you remember what rating this is up to? This, quite high, isn't it? It will, it will do for winter. So I'm gonna blow this up and put my sins. I have got oh, a little radio. He's off already. Oh, that's it. One of them little pumps. I keep it in this cap so it doesn't switch on accidentally. It doesn't accidentally get pressed inside the bag. Put that to one side for now. Yeah, for my sins, it's one of them. Put that on, does that? Yeah. See, this doubles up as a tent light. And it's actually, I think, lighter than the original tent light I had, so may as well. May as well. Right, I've got my quilt. My Thermarest quilt. Let's just go on wide angle. We can which is the Chorus 20, you can see. Is that got it? Yeah, the 20 Fahrenheit or six Celsius, minus six Celsius. So you'd think it'd be good to zero, uh, but I don't rate it, to be honest. So I've, what I've done is bought a cheap black diamond quilt and I've attached it, uh, just so just put some loops on the, on the cheap quilt and then just gone through the attachments that come with the quilt. So with them both together, <coughs> 
should be nice and toast there but it adds 500 grams which defeats the object of buying a lightweight quilt I would definitely go for a more expensive one if I could but these are dear enough these ones so basically I've just got a power bank and just some goodies in here head torch some at tweet meal coffees snacks flapjack for breakfast head torch yeah just keep everything in these little Dyneema bags made by Treadlight really good for keeping everything together Keep all your rubbish in one place. Excellent. Right. And the rucksack is the 48 litre Exos from Osprey. Got some water which we'll have to carry up. But it turns out there was some water on the way. Rain cover, some waterproofs, some uh, Burgos pack light, pants and jacket. Put them in the back. I've got my wallet, which I'll put to one side now, actually. Out the way. Right, that does, just about does it, really. You know, in the weight and the pulls, press it. We'll do a time lapse of that. Scotland in the distance, where well, it's in Isle of Man. Scotland up there. Made it, we survived to the morning. <coughs> it's been busy packing up. It was all clagged in. First things, so we didn't do an actual sunrise. But we got the back, the back end of it, the tail end of it. So we straight, straight down this morning, back to the car, just shy of three miles, which will do a total of 10 mile trip. We did seven up here and just over, about 4,300 did we do? Yeah. About 4,003 of a cent. But it was, I think it was quite hard for the distance. It was hard, I think. Definitely. But, you know. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Yeah, it 
was all clogged in like that this morning. Carl's just, uh, just got his tent up at home. Yeah, it keeps coming in and out, the clog. All packed up. Very fresh morning. Excuse the wind noise. Don't leave no trace as usual. Thanks there. See the patch. Comes there. Sorted. Good one. Right. Way down until next time.